Sun Credible Helianthus Yellow Hybrid is an indeterminate hybrid sunflower that does fabulous here in southern Louisiana and around the state. This is actually our current promoted super plant, uh, the summer 2021 super plant. You could see why. We've had so much rain here, it's still pushing through and just continues to flower. At this time of the season, you'll have everything from spent flowers to big flowers to flowers just coming out. And this will just keep going until we get our first freeze. Uh, what you can also see is the massive amount of pollinator activity on these plants. These bees absolutely love these sunflowers and these are one of our favorites in the garden. I'm standing in front of balloon milkweed, Gomphocarcus physocarpus. Now this is a much larger milkweed and you may not be familiar with this in the garden, but you see all these flowers on here which we're actually seeing a lot of pollinator activity on from wasps to bees and let's not forget that wasps actually are important pollinators in the garden. Uh, these flowers, once uh, they start to mature, they're actually going to create a really large green balloon shaped seed pod that's very interesting in the garden. So you get not only the flower interest but then the seed pod interest. Again, it's great for pollinators and this will be used by the monarch butterfly larval stage um, as a food source as well. It's holding up great in our super wet spring and summer that we're having and by the end of the season this plant will be as tall as I am. Here we are in our pollinator bed and this plant here is Verbena bonariensis purple haze and it's not the verbena that people typically think about. As you can see, it's much taller and creates these clusters of tiny purple flowers that are wonderfully attractive to many pollinator species. This plant makes an excellent background plant due to its tall height. It usually reaches about 40 inches in height um, and it also prefers dry locations. But as you can see, we've had a very wet year and it is still performing excellently. This is early bird gold, Rudbeckia. It is a sturdy perennial that comes back for us every year in the garden. Um, it's also highly attractive to pollinators, which we like here um, in our trial gardens. Early bird gold looks exceptional when planted as a border plant. And it's important to note that this one blooms from early summer all the way through mid fall. We often feature porter weeds as plants we like to highlight from our garden because they attract so many pollinators for such a tiny bloom. Now you can see that the bloom is fairly small on these plants, but they pack a lot of nectar and they push that nectar all day. The interesting thing about porter weeds is now there's active breeding going on in selection. So this is a fairly new selection called Nectar Wan Red. It's a huge improvement over the number of blooms that are open at one time and also the bright intense red color of the bloom as opposed to the coral porter weed which people are used to seeing in garden centers for many years. Another newer arrival to the porter weed party is ruby throat red which is very similar to nectar wand red but has a little bit more of a magenta or a hotter pink color laced in that red bloom. We're liking this one as well but this is our first year having it in the garden. This is a more traditional color that people are used to seeing for porter weed. This is just the regular purple. Now this plant will get quite large, reaching four or five feet in height at the end of the season. And in mild winters, it'll even come back from the ground, from its roots. Look at this bumblebee visiting this porter weed. This will be the last one we'll talk about today. This selection is called dwarf light blue porter weed. It's actually a native to South Florida and the Caribbean. And it's really more of a light lavender or light purple to me, but we like to feature this one because it's probably one of the shortest growing porter weeds out there and can be used at the front of the bed uh, rather than at the back of the bed. Now, I think we've featured this unusual plant before, but it's still not getting too much traction out in there, although a couple of garden centers and nurseries have started producing this. This is white ternera, and it's really a fantastic plant for your garden. It's a great pollinator attractor, and you can see that even though the flowers are open now here mid-morning, a lot of times the bees and the other pollinators will not wait for the flowers to open. They'll actually go ahead and just cut through the side of the flower while it's still closed, to get to that pollen and that nectar. This is dwarf joe pie weed. It stands at about four feet tall. Um, it is highly attractive to pollinators. It's actually planted in our pollinator garden. Um, usually at any given time of the day, you'll see a multitude of butterflies and bees all over these beautiful mauve colored flowers. 
Here we have a plant called Coreopsis, also known as tick seed, named for the shape of its seed pods. This variety is called Uptick Red, and it's a great pollinator plant with a very long bloom period. The flowers are a lovely yellow with a dark red center, and the form is very tidy and mounded. It usually gets around 12 to 14 inches high and wide, which makes pollinator attraction for the small garden or the container garden very easy. Furthermore, deadheading the flowers can help prolong the bloom period, which here usually lasts until the early fall. New for 2021 and in garden centers this year is this ornamental sweet potato called Sweet Caroline Medusa. It has excellent heat tolerance and great vigor. It makes a great foliage plant because the leaves are deeply lobed and generally greenish yellow in color with these hints of purple. It's a great plant to use for adding color and texture to the foregrounds, to hanging baskets, and also containers. And what's unique about this sweet potato is that it has a more mounded and less trailing habit. It spreads to about 18 to 30 inches and it can reach up to 12 inches tall. As an added bonus, it can withstand drier conditions. This is a new addition to the Suncredible series of Helianthus. Um, it's important to mention that we named Suncredible Yellow as a new super plant for this year. But I wanted to point out the new one to garden centers next year called Saturn. This is a new addition to the Ageratum Artist series from Proven Winners. This color is white and it's called Pearl. This is a really great, small, mounding, compact, and very dense and bushy plant. It's a great pollinator attractor. You can just see how uniform it is. Um, it's only going to get probably about 8 to 12 inches tall. Initial spread said that it would be about 10 inches, but obviously it's getting a little bigger than that in our climate. Yet still a really well-behaved garden plant and a nice pop of color. This is Ageratum Artist Blue. This is the, the sister plant to the new Artist Pearl and has the same compact growing habit, a nice mound shape, but you get this really nice pop of blue to blue-purple color in the garden. We've had this plant in the garden for a few years and we keep putting it in because it is such a great performer for us. This is Truffula Pink Gomfrina. This is a little bit uh, shorter Gomfrina. It branches better, so it stays a little bit bushier and you get a lot of blooms. Doesn't get very tall and we just love it. This is Pugster Budlia. This is the amethyst version. We really like the Pugster Budlias. They give us a really nice compact shrub uh, and just these great little small inflorescences full of color. It's a little late in the year for the Budlia. Uh, they were in their peak form about a month ago, but it's still a fantastic plant. The Pugster has amethyst, blue, and white in its series. White doesn't tend to do too well for us in, the, in our trials here at Hammond, but the amethyst and the blue are knockouts. This is Cypress papyrus. It is a fun and interesting plant that we have in our trials this year. Um, it's really loving our very wet summer so far. This one works well in the landscape, uh, would do great in containers, or even along the edges of a pond. Look at this incredible dark purple, almost black foliage at times of this new introduction from Proven Winners that'll be available next year. This is a coleus, which is now Plectranthus. This is part of their Color Blaze series, and this is Newly Noir. And this is one of the blackest plants we've seen in the garden this year. Now, we are starting to see a little bit of bloom early on this, and that could be because we're having such a wet summer. Um, we've had a lot of cloudy days. Not sure, but the plant is still growing really well. Now, this is going to be a really big coleus. Uh, these can get up to 40 inches tall, can get up to 36 inches wide, um, and uh, Proven Winter says it can go in the sun or the shade, but we have it out here in the full sun. This is a new plant from Proven Winters, and it should be available next year. This is a little bit of an improvement on their old standby of Evovulus, Blew My Mind. This is Blew My Mind XL, or extra large. The plant gets a little bit larger than the previous version, although the blooms are the same. Uh, it's a very bright blue color. This bloom color holds up really well in our summers. And uh, late in the afternoon, you may notice them start to close up. But right now, mid-morning, they're absolutely beautiful. 
So Evolvulus Blew My Mind XL is supposed to get a little bit larger than the older version. I think we are starting to see that, although it's fairly early in the season here in mid-July. But it can spread up to about 20 inches. So we're going to wait to the end of the season and see. Um, it looks like it might be getting pretty close to that now. Here's a plant we've featured a few times, but that's for good reason. Uh, this is Gallardia, the Heated Up series from Proven Winners, and this is the yellow color. Um, the reason why we like to feature it is because here we are in the middle of probably one of the wettest summers we've had, and it's still blooming. Um, it hasn't really started to go down. It's holding up well in the heat and the humidity and all the rainfall. If you're looking for a deer resistant, heat resistant pollinator plant, Lantana checks all your boxes. Lantanas are easy to grow and generally tolerate a range of soils. Here we have the luscious Lantana series from Proven Winners. The citrone color is new for 2021 and will be in garden centers next year. It's a vigorous grower that still maintains a tidy mounding habit and it blooms reliably all summer long and it reaches around 20 to 30 inches tall and wide. Another one of our lantanas that has been performing excellent in this very wet weather is this new pink variety of the Lucky Lantana from Ball. And as you can see, it's just swarming with pollinators. This variety is also smaller and more compact, maintaining a more tight and mounded habit. It really only spreads to about 12 to 14 inches and reaches 12 to 16 inches in height. Another type of lantana is this shamrock peach lantana from Ball, and it is new for 2022. It can be considered a less spreading form of the Lucky series, remains even tighter and smaller, uh, which makes it great for containers and small gardens. New in garden centers next year from Proven Winners is this Ladybird Sun Glow. This is a Calilophus, and many people will know this as kind of a wildflower in drier parts of the country. Uh, it's a beautiful little primrose, and what I'm really impressed with is the fact that it's held up so well with such a wet year. Uh, it seems to be pretty humidity tolerant and definitely tolerating our rain. Uh, we also see some pollinators visiting this. Here's something you don't see very often in Louisiana. This is a heliotrope and it is doing quite well. This is the Augusta series and this is called Lavender. This is from Proven Winners and it's making a really nice mound. It's got this really showy uh, lavender bloom. It's being visited by a lot of pollinators which we like and this should get about uh, 24 to 36 inches wide although right now it's barely making the 24 inch measurement but later on this summer we'll see if it continues to get bigger. Should get about 12 or 15 inches or so tall. Another one of my new favorite trial plants in the garden this year is this Thunbergia vine. Uh, this is from Proven Winners, and this is called Coconut Appeal. We have another color uh, that's been on the market called Tangerine Slice Appeal, but this new coconut one features this really kind of soft, creamy, ivory color flower with that dark black eye. Um, we have seen some pollinators on this, and uh, it is really starting to climb up the trellis and uh, cover them pretty well. We expect this to be a pretty vigorous grower in the garden. For those of y'all who have tuned into our virtual tours in the past, you will know that I absolutely love Peach Perfection Abelia by Star Roses and Plants. This is one of my favorite plants and I keep talking about it because it's such a fantastic plant. It has amazing color, color changes throughout the year, the new growth comes out with this really peachy orange color, incredible flower power, and the spent flowers actually still look very attractive. What you also have with Peach Perfection Abelia is an insane amount of pollinator activity. We have butterflies and bees and pollinating wasps and all sorts of in-between that visit this plant. But one of my favorite aspects of this compared to other abelias is this form. It is completely perfect form, what you would want. It stays a few feet high, even shape, just a great plant we can't talk enough about here at the Hammond Station. We're really loving these two compact arborvitae from Proven Winners. We have Anna's Magic Ball and Tater Tot. Now Anna's Magic Ball has this really nice chartreuse yellow color, uh, especially in the full sun. And Tater Tot has more of that typical arborvitae green, this lush green. They're both staying this tall. They've been in the ground for about three years, so it doesn't look like they're gonna grow anymore. These would make an excellent replacement for a small boxwood hedge or any small hedge you might want in the garden with some extra added texture to it. 
Here we have Everleaf Thai Towers Basil, which is a new variety from Ball Seed. Um, as you can see, it's got a nice compact columnar growth habit. The aroma is just spectacular when you brush by it or walk past it in the garden. And it does have the classic Thai um, flavor that you would expect in this basil. From Suntory plants comes one of our favorite scavolas. This is the Sardiva series, and this is the white. Uh, this is an improved version of the white color, and we absolutely love it. You can see it's staying in this really nice tight mound. It's just completely full of flowers, taking the rain like a champ, um, the heat, the humidity, and it's just got a continuous bloom on it. Uh, we have this planted in full sun, and it can get up to about 24 inches across by the end of the season, but only stays about six or eight inches tall, generally. Uh, we also have some of this planted in uh, part sun, or, and it's doing pretty well there, too. This is the coral color of the Sundinia line or series from Suntory. Uh, these are diplodinias, and um, although we haven't seen tons of growth on these, probably due to how wet the summer's been, this coral color is really blooming a lot, and it's still making quite a show, and it's a really intense color as you look across the garden. Catharanthus, commonly known as vinca, is a great annual bedding plant, and the Soiree Kawaii series um, is an excellent, low-growing, micro-blooming variety that produces tons of these tiny, brightly colored flowers. It withstands our southern heat really well and blooms heavily, continuously all summer long. The foliage is also quite beautiful. It's a dark, glossy green. This plant is really great for adding color to foregrounds, both in the landscape and in containers. There are several colors available, and three new colors for 2021 are the Coral Reef, Red Shades, and Blueberry Kiss. Here we have Royal Star Dali Hydrangea Paniculata. It is doing exceptionally well in the full sun. As you can see, there are pollinators covering the beautiful cream-colored flowers, which are fragrant and also great for cut flowers. This one is at a height of about six feet. Sometimes here at the Hammond Research Station, we'll get trial plants that are actually kind of off-cycle for us. So normally we wouldn't be planting petunias, even these supertunias, uh, in May. But sometimes we get synthes just to see how the heat tolerance is on these uh, particular plants. So this is new for next year um, with proven winners. This is jazzberry. It's a really great bright purple, almost kind of fuchsia color. Uh, this is um, a supertunia vista. And if you'll notice that the uh, plant is still blooming really well, uh, it's spread quite a bit. Um, typically, uh, they can get 24 inches, maybe even up to 36 uh, when planted in cooler season. But I have to say, we're impressed that this plant is still uh, chugging along here in mid-July with all the rain, heat, and humidity. This plant is not actually part of our official warm season trials, but it's a holdover from our late winter or early spring trial planting from proven winners. Uh, this is Chrysocephalum, uh, sometimes called straw flower, and I am very surprised and impressed as, at how well it's held up through our wet winter, wet spring, and now wet summer. This is the yellow color, and you can see it's got this great little yellow bloom on the top of this mounding silver foliage, which is unusual and kind of hard to find for plants here in the deep south. Daylilies are a favorite plant for many southern gardeners, but the rust disease has really created an issue in that it really takes the plant down and reduces vigor and you'll lose bloom. Mr. Dale Westmoreland at West Farms Nursery here in this part of Louisiana, just near Franklinton, has really done some excellent breeding on rust-resistant daylilies. Now you may see a little rust on the leaves, but the plant is able to power through it. And this particular selection right here is called Katie, and it's still blooming. You can see how many scapes have already bloomed by the dead stalks, but it's still going and we're here in mid-July. Here's another one of Mr. Dale Westmoreland's daylilies called Miss Bell. This is another really robust and vigorous daylily that's also rust resistant. And this one is named after his mom. Here's one of my favorite plant pairings. On the left, you'll see this euphorbia from Proven Winners called Diamond Mountain. It holds up really well in the heat and the humidity and makes a nice border 
On the right is Megilla perilla. This is not a plant that's as common as it should be in garden centers, but it's a great alternative to sun coleus with its bright magenta stripe down the purple leaves. Here from Proven Winners, we have Cake Pops Verbena. This is Cake Pops Pink. Uh, this is Verbena Rigida. Now, this is a low spreading plant. Uh, we'll probably only get about 10 to 18 inches tall, 10 to 18 or 24 inches wide. Uh, this is a native. Many people will recognize this from roadsides and other native wildflower gardens. Another color in the series of Cake Pops Verbena is this purple. And uh, these will both be new for next year in garden centers. There'll be a new addition next year from Proven Winners to the Unplugged Salvia series. Uh, this is a Salvia hybrid, and this is Unplugged Pink. Now, right now, um, it's cycling maybe a little bit out of bloom, but it's been a great performer, and I can see it's pushing through again, even though it's been so wet. You have this really nice, dark, uh, purple, magenta color to the bloom with a dark calyx, and the plants are staying, oh, about 16 or 18 inches uh, tall right now in a nice mounded shape. Here's a new catmint, or a napita, from Darwin Perennials. I'm really loving this plant. Uh, this is called Prelude Purple. It is holding up extremely well in our very wet summer. It has a nice mounding habit with bright green leaves and lots of beautiful purple flowers. Um, we have high hopes that this plant will continue to power on through the summer. This year we received a couple of artemisias from Darwin Perennials. This is the first year they're planted, uh, but they're actually holding up quite well so far. Again, as we said, we've had an incredibly wet spring and summer, and artemisias are not generally known for their tolerance of wet feet. This series is called Sunfern. And you can see that because of the lacy fern-like leaves. Now the other nice thing about artemisias is that when the leaves are rubbed or crushed, they have an incredibly spicy kind of clean fragrance to them that's quite enjoyable in the garden. From Darwin Perennials this year, we also received a new series of Monarda. Now the old standby in Louisiana is Jacob Klein Monarda because it actually can handle all our wet weather. But so far, some of these colors in the Bee Mine series, and that's bee like a bumblebee, um, are holding up well and actually growing quite vigorously. And we're starting to see a nice bloom on them. In our edible ornamental selections this year, we have a new introduction from Ball Seed. It's candy cane chocolate cherry pepper. This is a sweet pepper or a bell pepper, and it's got this wonderful variegated foliage, as you can see. And also, if you'll take a look at the striped or variegated fruit. Now, later on when this fruit matures, it looks like it's going to be uh, have various colors in terms of purples, reds. It's supposed to be really bright. So later on in the season when this matures, we'll give you guys an update. Here's a beautiful paniculata hydrangea in one of our azalea garden beds. Now this is a really large, tall specimen with more of an open bloom, but it just goes to show you how important paniculata hydrangeas are becoming in the industry here in the south. They have great sun and heat tolerance and you get a wonderful bloom that's also very attractive to pollinators. If foliage is your thing and you're interested in great foliage color, check out the new collection of caladiums from Proven Winners. We've got a nice collection here planted at the Hammond Research Station. We've got all colors, all different leaf patterns, and we've got great choices for sun, shade, or both. New this year from Proven Winners is the Double Up series of begonia. These are really tight, small, compact begonias. They're only going to get, you know, maybe a max of uh, 16 to 18 inches tall and maybe up to about 14 inches wide, but they stay in these cute little mounds. And the most striking feature are the double blooms, and the white color actually looks a little bit like popcorn. We've got these planted where they're receiving uh, morning and a little bit of midday sun and afternoon shade. From Pan Am Seed, we got this beautiful mix of the Coleus Wizard series. So I think the mix is actually new, uh, but some of these Coleus have been out on the market and you might recognize them. Uh, they are fairly compact. They really don't need to be pinched. And we've got them planted in part shade. So they're really rated more for part shade and part sun. So let's not forget that the original Coleus were always just used in shade gardens. 
With the Beacon series of downy mildew resistant impatiens from Pan American Seed, a ball company, impatiens are once again popping up in shade gardens throughout the south. So here's a new mixture for this year. This is called the Formula Mix, and it features a number of different colors, some of our favorites such as the orange and the salmon and coral. We've been so impressed with the performance of these Beacon series impatiens that we named them a super plant for 2021. You're looking at rose, a new color that was added this year to the wonderful Beacon Impatient series. We're glad to have this new color, bright pink, as a member of the family. And now for something completely different from the Ball Horticulture Company. This is Lancelot Salvia. And I'm really excited to see that it's growing well here. This is billed as a water-wise plant. And you can see from the color of the silver foliage that it probably looks like a plant that would grow in drier conditions. Now, we've planted this one in part sun, and it's in a well-drained bed that's surrounded by a lot of pine trees, so the ground doesn't stay quite as wet here. And it's doing okay. It's starting to bloom. We love the foliage, and the foliage also has a really incredible strong sage-like scent. Normally, when we think of hydrangeas, we think of the shade-loving mophead hydrangeas, but this is limelight, which is a panicle hydrangea, and it's a more robust type that tolerates full sun to part shade and is generally more vigorous in growth. Limelight is one of my favorite super plants, and it produces abundant, large, upright flower panicles of creamy white flowers. It can reach six to 10 feet tall, almost becoming a small tree like this one here. But if you want to keep it in shrub form, you can easily prune it regularly. Limelight hydrangea has been a fantastic bloomer and excellent performer year after year in our gardens.